Hi, I'm Ryan Szymanski, curator for Battleship New Jersey Museum and Memorial. Today, we're going to be talking about why New Jersey is the longest battleship ever built. So for those of you who've been watching the channel for a while, uh, you know that the Battleship New Jersey claims to be the longest one ever built. Iowa-class battleships are designed to be 887 foot 3 inches long, but the Navy lists New Jersey's length as 887 foot 7 inches long. So that much is uh, pretty well undisputed, but nobody has ever been able to come up with where those extra 4 inches might be. So uh, I have four theories for you today on why New Jersey was the longest battleship ever built. The one that is popular to tell at the museum is that the shipyard workers were partially from the state of New Jersey, and so they intentionally added that extra length to make it the longest battleship ever. Another possibility is that the uh, plates that make up the ship were sent to the shipyard oversized, and the shipyard had to mill them down to exact specifications, uh, which is normally within one one hundredth of an inch. Well, obviously, over the course of all of these plates being put together, you might get some extra length in there. Next up is temperature related. Uh, as you know, things expand and contract. Iowa class battleships have an expansion joint in place to account for this. And uh, when it is hotter, every certain number of degrees, the ship expands a certain amount. And when it gets colder, they contract a certain amount. So temperature might have something to do with the measurement. And finally, the curve of the bow and the stern may be different on New Jersey than on the other ships. So we will run through all of those and what they mean in just a second and how likely I think they are. But first, we would like to thank the sponsor of today's video, CuriosityStream. CuriosityStream is the best place to find and watch documentaries about science, history, technology, nature, travel, and so much more. But for you guys watching this, in order of importance, history, history, history. Curiosity Stream has exclusive award-winning films and shows that you can't watch anywhere else, plus the deepest collection of the best documentaries from around the world, deeper than any other streaming service out there. Curiosity Stream adds new shows every week and is one of the very best deals in streaming. Curiosity Stream is the entertainment brand for people who want to know more. It's available to watch on all of your favorite streaming devices, such as on the web, the TV, Xbox, Amazon Fire Stick, Apple TV, you name it. Any of your mobile devices can play this. It's available worldwide, not limited based on where you live. And again, it's got content that spans all sorts of topics, such as science, nature, technology, tech, military history. Well, that's more interesting than regular history. Uh, music and, and more. Uh, Curiosity Streams adds new shows every week. While they've got a ton of World War II shows, such as Apocalypse World War II, my favorite one that I've watched so far is called The Nazi Whaling Squadron, and it's about the first uh, industrial wholesale slaughter that the Nazis conduct. Between 1936 and 1939, the Nazis murder 15,000 whales around Antarctica to render their fat into margarine because they didn't want to buy it from Great Britain and Norway anymore. I have studied World War II history for a long time, and that was absolutely my first time hearing about this. Uh, and it's an amazingly interesting subject. While Nazi Germany had a third-rate navy, they had the third largest whaling fleet in the world at that time. If you are already a subscriber to uh, Curiosity Stream, let me know what your favorite show is in the comment section down below. After I finish all the World War II shows, I'm going to start watching all the uh, dinosaur documentaries. Go to curiositystream.com battleship or pause the video and scan the QR code here on the screen for unlimited access to the world's top documentaries and non-fiction series. And for fans of Battleship New Jersey, use our promo code BATTLESHIP to save 25% off. 
it's already one of the most affordable and best deals in streaming. So click the link below or go to curiositystream.com slash battleship to save 25% right now. I'm still blown away that uh, the whale population around Antarctica still hasn't recovered from the Nazi industrial slaughter. But back to the topic of today's video. Uh, so the first of our four possibilities that we've thought up so far, and the one I think is least likely, but the one that the museum staff tell the most frequently, is Battleship New Jersey is the only battleship that's built by a workforce from her home state, at least in the Iowa class. Uh, the story goes that knowing that the Iowa class was the biggest and best class of battleships that the U.S. was going to build, that the workforce uh, at the Philadelphia Navy Yard, which is about half Pennsylvanians and about half New Jerseyans who ride the ferry across the river, intentionally built the ship longer uh, so that they could say that they had the, the world's longest battleship. That, that's an interesting theory, but we've got no evidence to support that. And also, it's uh, an incredibly gendered theory. You see, one third of the workforce building New Jersey uh, was female. So oftentimes the punchline of this joke theory is that uh, you know, to women an extra four inches matters. Uh, so yeah, we're, where these uh, folks added the extra four inches, not accounted for, that's, that's that whole theory right there. So honestly, I think that intentional is the least likely uh, where did they fit it in without the designers at the Philadelphia Navy Yard, the blueprint drawers, the engineers figuring it out? Uh, and how did they know that the Iowa class was going to be the last and the biggest? While New Jersey was under construction, uh, all of the Iowa class hadn't been authorized. Some later ships are added later on. The Montana class is still in the pipeline. And at this point, battleships still reign supreme. So even if um, in 1943, New Jersey is the largest battleship. That doesn't mean that in 1950, the U.S. isn't going to build a new, bigger class. So uh, this theory makes very little sense to me. Our next theory is considerably more plausible because it is based on some, some real facts. The steel mills make the steel plates intentionally large, send them to the shipyard, and then the shipyard mills them down to the proper size as on the blueprints. And again, there's uh, about a, a one one hundredth of an inch tolerance for making these uh, parts. So as the shipyard is milling down all of the individual plates it takes to make the ship uh, 887 feet, it is possible that over that distance, if it's consistently one one hundredth of an inch larger uh, or even a little bit bigger, that, uh, hey, maybe it just adds that extra length somewhere along uh, the, the entire length of the ship. The plans for the ship aren't precise. I've looked at uh, sets of blueprints that show either side of a bulkhead, and they've got like the door is two feet to one side on this side and two feet to the other side on the other plan. So, so these are hand drawn. They're not done with CAD drawings. They're imprecise. So it is far more believable for me that uh, as they're milling the plates, the ship ends up just a little bit longer and because the plans are already imprecise, the engineers just allow it and, and are able to work around it. And then by the time uh, Wisconsin is built next to her a year later, they, they've gotten stuff worked out a little bit better. Uh, and maybe they're even saving material now that the war's on and, and there's all sorts of steel rationing going on. Uh, so possibly that's where the difference comes in. The next uh, most likely theory is that the bow and stern curves of the ship are not exactly as designed. Some of the plans of the ship show that New Jersey is actually a little bit shorter at her 860 foot waterline length than design, uh, 859 feet and a couple of inches. So that would imply that the extra length must come from the bow and stern overhangs. And that is a very easy place to add an extra four inches, either intentionally or accidentally. Uh, so, for example, 
the curve on the stern of New Jersey is designed uh, to go around and up, and then at a certain point, it transitions into a flat face. If, for some reason, to save time or for whatever reason, they decided to leave that curve at its angle on the way up, instead of flattening it out, well, then that would uh, potentially add enough extra length to the ship. Uh, likewise, the bow has a significantly deeper curve, and if that is off by just a little bit, it's, again, relatively easy to add uh, an extra four inches there, or two inches on each end, or something like that. So it's not out of the realm of the impossible for that to be where the extra length came from. The final theory is that the uh, temperature affected the measurements. I'm not entirely sure how they measured the ship, um, and it's not particularly precise. You guys, uh, some of you guys in the past have commented, oh, you should do laser measuring. Cool, all right, we bring a laser measure out, we, we measure the ship, and she's gonna look like she's over 900 feet long because she's floating. She's, she's moving up and down and side to side, front to back. Uh, we, we cannot measure her in place. In theory, when we take her into dry dock, uh, we could potentially scan her. Missouri did that during their 2009 dry docking, um, and it came out with fairly precise results, but I'm not sure if it would be precise enough to see a couple of inch difference. Um, and if laser scanning might not be precise enough, what methods was the Navy using uh, to make these measurements initially? Also, several of the different blueprint plans uh, specifically the dry docking plans, list the ship's length as being different. So I've got some numbers here that I've compiled from four separate dry docking plans. Uh, we've got one from 1943 that uh, lists the stern overhang as seven foot three inches. A second one from 1943 uh, later in the year lists the stern overhang as seven foot five and a quarter inches. So somehow there's a two and a half inch or two and a quarter inch difference over just the year 1943. Uh, likewise, it measures the length overall as 860 feet in the first plan and 859 feet, 10 and a quarter inches in the second plan. So was one of those just a more precise measurement or was there something else going on? Uh, likewise, they all list the bow overhang as uh, 20 feet. The uh, original 1943 plan is 20 foot zero inches. The second plan is 20 foot three and one eighths inches. Now that one might be accountable because over the course of 1943, they add the bow pulpit on New Jersey, which does have a little bit more overhang than the standard bow. Likewise, length overall starts out as 887 foot three inches. Uh, maybe they are just recording the standard Iowa length and that's why it's a seven foot three, 860 uh, and 887. Uh, so that might be, th this original dry docking is just, this is the, the standard, what the blueprint says. Uh, whereas the second plan is they've actually measured her and, and they're getting numbers that are off. Uh, so the second plan says that the overall length is 887 foot six and five eighths inches overall. Cool. Uh, now I've got two more plans, one from 1983 and one from 1990. So her first dry docking plan when she's reactivated and her last dry docking plan when she's being decommissioned. Uh, the 1983 plan says that her waterline length is 860 feet, uh, not 859, 10 and a quarter. And it says that she is 887 foot long, eight and three eighths inches. The 1990 plan, likewise, uh, <laughs> well, this one lists the bow overhang as 20 foot two and five eighths inches, as opposed to 20 foot three and one eighths inches. Um, and it lists her as 887 foot eight inches and three eighths. So again, like we are, we're seeing discrepancies in these lengths over time. Is that a measurement error 
or is something else going on? With an overall length of 887 foot, every 14 degree temperature change results in one inch of extra length or shrinkage for an Iowa class battleship. So for example, uh, it is about 50 degrees here in uh, New Jersey. Let's say it is about uh, 78 degrees on Missouri in Hawaii. Missouri would be two inches longer than New Jersey if they started out at the same length. This likely accounts for some of the variants we're seeing in the dry dock plans over time. Remember, we're, we're just seeing like two and a quarter inches here and, and two and a half inches there. Uh, so that may well be temperature related. This might not account for why the ship is so much longer. Remember, in the 1950s, all of the Iowas are operating out of uh, Norfolk. In the 1940s, all of the Iowas are in the Pacific. In the 1980s, New Jersey and Missouri are both based out of Long Beach. So their dry docking plans should have the same length because it's roughly the same temperature, and yet they don't. Uh, so is New Jersey always going into dry dock in the summer while her sister ships are always going in in the winter? Whereas New Jersey always operating in warm climates. That doesn't quite make sense. Uh, so that likely accounts for some of the variants we're seeing, but not all of it. Uh, I should mention that uh, that one inch per 14 degrees over 887 feet uh, is for high tensile steel specifically. New Jersey is a mix of various types of armor and mild steel, medium steel, high tensile steel, um, etc. But it all has relatively similar properties. So one inch per 14 degrees is close enough for this. It shows you just how little of a temperature swing. Uh, like the, the temperature is going to drop close to 30 degrees overnight uh, today here in Camden. So that means that the ship is likely going to shrink at, at least two inches um, overnight, which is wild to think about. It's also why our system of coatings needs to be so robust uh, because as the ship is contracting and expanding day in and day out, that is working the paint and causing it to pop off. So those are the four theories that I have collected so far on why New Jersey is the longest Iowa class battleship. The women made her that way. They milled the plates the wrong way. It's temperature related or they didn't do the bow and stern curves correctly. Which of those four do you think is most likely? Let us know in the comments section down below. Battleship New Jersey receives operating support from the New Jersey Department of State, also from a number of other businesses and private individuals like yourselves. In particular, we'd like to thank Curiosity Scream for supporting today's episode. Remember, go to curiositystream.com battleship or scan the QR code for unlimited eye access to the world's top documentaries and nonfiction series, and use the code BATTLESHIP to save an extra 25% off. CuriosityStream.com slash Battleship. It's linked in the description below. Go and watch the Nazi Whaling Squadron and tell me what you think about that. Absolutely wild. You can also support the museum by liking, sharing, and subscribing so more people find out about us and our channel. Thanks for watching.